Good afternoon, boys and girls. I'm sorry, I got a little bit of a late start this morning. Um, with my reading, I am going to read to you today um, chapter 19 of Wayside School. It gets a little stranger. And I'm also going to read to you once again from where the sidewalk ends because it's poetry month. April is poetry month. That's why I'm doing the poems. Today is called Sarah Cynthia Sylvia Stout Will Not Take the Garbage Out. I'm reading that today because tomorrow is Earth Day. Um, so we take, talk about taking care of the Earth. Here it goes. It's a long one. Look at all those words. But uh, we're smart. We can handle it. Sarah Cynthia Sylvia Stout would not take the garbage out. She scoured the pots and scraped the pans, candy the yams and spice the hams. And though her daddy would scream and shout, she simply would not take the garbage out. And so it piled up to the ceilings, coffee grounds, potato peelings, brown bananas, rotten peas, chunks of sour cottage cheese. It filled the can, it covered the floor, it cracked the window and blocked the door with bacon rinds and chicken bones, drippy ends of ice cream cones, gloppy glumps of cold oatmeal, prune, prune pits, peach pits, orange peel, pizza crust and withered greens, soggy beans and tangerines, crust of black burnt buttery toast, ugh. Gristling bits of beefy roast. The garbage rolled on down the hall. It raised the roof. It broke the wall. Greasy napkins, cookie crumbs, globs of gooey bubble gum, cellophane from green bologna, rubbery, blubbery macaroni, peanut butter caked and dry, curdled milk and crust of pie, moldy melons, dried up mustard, eggshells mixed with lemon custard, cold french fries and rancid meat, Yellow lumps of cream of wheat. At last the garbage reached so high that it finally touched the sky. And, and all the neighbors moved away and none of her friends would come to play. Can't say I blame them. And finally Sarah Cynthia Stout said, okay, I'll take the garbage out. But then of course it was too late. The garbage reached across the state. Devil says hi. From New York to the Golden Gate, and there in that garbage she did hate, poor Sarah met an awful fate that I cannot right now relate, because the hour is much too late. But children, remember Sarah Stout, and always take the garbage out. Yeah, you don't want it to be stinking, smelly. So what are you doing? Come on. Get down. Do you want to sit? Cats, man. And some of you said cats would be a good class pet. You're talking more like a cuddle pet, like Luna. I mean, he's sweet. Okay, anyway, back to it. Chapter 19, it's called Time Out. We know chapter 19 is always a little bit different because the, in Wayside School, there is no 19th story. Miss Sarves taught the class on the 19th story. There is no 19th story, then there is no Miss Sarves, but you already know that. So how do you explain the cow in her classroom? Miss Sarves drew a triangle on the blackboard. A triangle has three sides, she said, then pointed to each side. One, two, three. She drew a square. A square has four sides. One, two, three, four. She walked around the cow to the other side of the board. She drew a pentagon, a hexagon, and a perfect heptagon. A heptagon has seven sides. Miss Sarves was very good at drawing shapes. When most people try to draw a heptagons, there's always one side that sticks out funny. But Miss Sarves' heptagon was perfect. Every side was the same length and every angle the same degree. It was a great talent, and but nobody appreciated her. Nobody appreciated anything she did. It was like... They didn't know she was there. She counted the sides on a heptagon. One, two, three, four. Moo! said the cow. Miss Sarves dropped her chalk. She glared at the cow. I hate this, she sat, shouted. It was a brown cow with a white head. It's all right, Miss Sarves, said Virginia, her best, and I'll get the chalk for you. No, said Miss Sarves, leave it where it is. The cow made me drop the chalk. The cow should pick it up. Her students gaped at her. 
I will not continue, said Miss Starbs, until the cow picks up that piece of chalk and draws an octagon on the board. She's going to be waiting a long time. She folded her arms across her across her chest, stared and stared at the cow and waited. Ray raised his hand. Yes, Ray, said Miss Starbs, arms still folded across her chest. Uh, cows can't pick up chalk, said Cat Ray. Miss Starbs sighed. I know, she said, and I can't teach with a cow in my classroom. <clears throat> no one has ever seen Miss Starbs so upset. She usually has a pleasant disposition, meaning she's usually in a pretty decent mood. It's okay, uh, Miss Starbs said, Virginia. I don't mind the cow. You get used to it after a while, said Ray. What cow, said Nick? Oh, that one. I forgot it was there. Miss Sarf smiled. She knew her students were trying to make her feel better. Other classrooms have goldfish or hamsters, she said. Said Virginia, it's really no different. No, said Miss Sarves. I won't have it. All my life I've been accommodating. I've never been one to complain. And what has it gotten me? A cow. She shook her head. When I was a little girl, my friends never did what I wanted to do, she said. I always had to do what they wanted to do. And the teacher has never called on me in class. She always called on the kids who just shouted out without raising their hands, even though she said she wouldn't. She'd say, I won't call on you if you don't raise your hand. But then she always did anyway. But I was a good girl, and I never shouted out. And they always did out things alphabetically, so I was always last, if there was time for me at all. My parents were too busy for me. They were always dressing up and going to fancy parties. I had to tuck myself in at night and wish myself sweet dreams. She took a tissue out of her sleeve and wiped a tear from her eye. Still, I always try to keep a smile on my face. Well, not anymore. The days of walk all over Miss Starbs are finished. She threw open the classroom door. The squeaky wheel gets the grease. What are you going to do, asked Virginia. I'm going out there, said Miss Starbs, and I'm not going back until I get some grease. She stepped outside. She decided to go right to the top, so she headed down the stairs to the principal's office. Joy and Mauricia were coming up the stairs. Todd is uglier than he is dumb said mauricia you're crazy said joy he's dumber than he is ugly oh teased mauricia i'm going to tell todd you think he's cute miss sarf stepped out in front of them what are you children doing at a class she asked i didn't say he was cute said joy he's just not as ugly as he is dumb that means you think he's handsome said mauricia are you going to marry him i've asked you a question said miss sarf oh gross said joy i'm a teacher said miss sarf that means you're supposed to listen to me. Joy and Mauricia walked right past her. Miss Starve sighed and then continued down to Mr. Kitzwater's office. She took a deep breath to steady her nerves. She was about to knock, but then he changed her mind and just marched in. Hey, Kitzwater, I want to talk to you. The principal was making a rubber band ball. Do you hear me? asked Miss Starves. She opened her his de he opened his desk drawers. Look for more rubber bands. If you don't answer me right now, said Miss Arbs, I'm walking out that door and never coming back. Mr. K pressed the buzzer on his phone. Miss Knight, I need you to order you need to order more rubber bands. That's it, said Miss Arbs. I'm leaving. Goodbye. I quit. She walked out of the of the school and took a breath of fresh air. Breath of fresh air. Ugh, sorry. Please don't go, Miss Arbs, said a voice behind her. Startled, she turned around. We need you, said a bald-headed man. He was standing be between two other men. Both had black mustaches, and one carried a black attache case. The bald man didn't have a mustache. Can you see me, she asked. Yes, of course, said the bald man, and we appreciate all of your hard work. You do? All three nodded very sincerely. Miss Starves was touched. I've been teaching for 30 years, she said, and nobody's ever said that before. Well, it's not easy being a teacher, said the bald man. I don't get any respect, said Miss Sars. People treat me like I'm a nobody. It's not easy being a teacher, said the man with the, the briefcase, the attache case. You have to walk, work long hours and get for very little money. I've never gotten paid, said Miss Sars. And this is my first time out of the building in 30 years. It's not easy being a teacher, agreed the other man with the mustache. Even in the book I'm reading... To my class, said Miss Starbs. The author makes fun of teachers. It's a tragedy, said the bald man. Then why do it, asked Miss Starbs. Why teach anymore? I could quit and nobody would care. Children need you, all three men said together. Miss Starbs sighed. I like to teach, she said. I really do. I love the children. It's just... She stopped and wiped her eyes. The man with the attache case opened it. He took out a handkerchief and handed it to Miss Starbs. 
Thank you, she said. She blew her nose, then gave it back to him. He placed it in his attache case. Can you at least get the cow out of my classroom, she asked. The bald man smiled. I'll see what I can do, he said. Miss Sark smiled as slowly as she shook her head. Then she turned and walked back into the building. Oh, poor Miss Sars. Um, don't forget today is socially distancing twin day. Um, if you have a picture of you and like a friend wearing the same outfit or maybe you and a pet. I don't know. Maybe you and mom. You and dad. You and your brother and sister. Send me a picture. Okay, we'll get it on the cab social media. Um, have a great day. Um, stay safe. Bye.